Joe Biden now said it's um, climate change can only be fought against with technology and innovation. And IoT is the, is the key technology for that because IoT tells us what's going on. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Zooming In on IoT. In this second episode, we have a really exciting guest from IBM, and we are super proud to, uh, to bring this conversation forward. It's going to be highly interesting. Now, the tectonic plates of IoT and digital transformation are moving big time these days. The thing is, though, that about 75% of all IoT projects fail for some reason. So, you know, too much magic gets lost in these one-to-one -one Zoom meetings we're, in, uh, we're all in these days. So how about bringing thought leaders together uh, to share knowledge and opinions to better those 75% together? That's what Zooming in on IoT is all about. The format will, format will be low-fi, high value. Let's go. My name is Anas. I'm CCO of Onomondo. We are a Copenhagen-based startup that makes cloud connectivity tailored to IoT. We're currently 26 people working out of Copenhagen, and we're deployed in a bit more than 140 countries uh, on behalf of our customers' current days. As said, today I have an awesome guest with me from IBM, and that is Hatjo. So Hatjo, over to you. Please introduce yourself to, to our listeners and, and viewers out there. Hi, thank you, Anders. Um, yeah, I'm um, Hatjo Kopma. I'm working a long time already for IBM. Um, currently, I'm, I'm running and building the business partner ecosystem in the Watson Center in Munich. So I, I try to find startups, small companies, very special um, high value companies like Ono Mondo uh, to work with, to combine with others um, in order to drive innovation, to co-create and to, um, to, um, to co-innovate for customers, for common customers. So we have a mutual, uh, a mutual benefit um, value. So we, we always do this because we both want to, or all the partners and IBM wants to benefit from the outcomes. Um, I, I, um, yeah, I, I worked with software all my life. Um, I'm an um, electrotechnic uh, uh, transmission technique engineer, um, but I've never really used it because I could step into, into either doing um, user interfaces, user interface design, information design, or um, software. And um, yeah, uh, over national and international positions, I'm now in Munich and I, I really enjoy working with, um, with many different companies, smaller and larger, um, to create new things together and, and help customers thrive. Thank you so much, Hatio. I, I have to say one of the things that, that strike me first when, when, when you and I met up in, yeah, during this virtual world we're, we're now in is that you, you seem both capable and passionate in, in the space, both from almost like design thinking, driving projects forward from a collaborative and creative point of view, and then, then way into to the tech space like you touched briefly upon. Can, can you maybe sort of share your view on how those things are, are working together these days? Yeah, I, I picked up um, uh, a lot of tech, tech skills, as, as, you, as you mentioned. Um, but I learned um, through many years that it's most important to be successful is to focus on people, on people in your team, on, on people at the customer or at, at the partners um, to, to work for, to work with in order to be successful. Um, if, if people want to follow, if people get the purpose, if, if people get the sense of, of uh, working collaborative, you can do uh, almost everything. So um, that really drives me and, and, and um, design thinking is one um, that, that just fits into this picture, right? Because you do something um, for people, you provide a user experience, a convenience, um, consuming services or software, and, and if you can do this really, um, you, you can convince um, that uh, people that this is worth looking at or, or considering uh, to use. So during all my, my life, I was a long time um, a people leader. I'm still, I'm still leading without authority. And, and I, I'm, I enjoy 
working with people and and getting ideas together and being really collaborative. Maybe let me just ask a bit more into this people people part because that that's really interesting and that's relevant for all of us, not only in in the business of IT but in general. And and adding a bit of flavor for Monomondo, I'd have to say that 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 we insist in 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 I can't say over investing, but investing. Uh, massive, massive amounts of, of time into both hiring the right people and also setting these amazing talents up to success. And that that's the key thing driving our business forward. Uh, one thing I, I took notice of, of what you just said was um, something uh, along the lines of the indirect leadership, which I think is maybe an, an underestimated discipline. Uh, what, what's your point of view on both indirect leadership? And can, can you come into a little maybe also on, on on how you now drive the collaboration with with partners based on on your point of view and 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 your experience here. Yeah, yeah. I, I think what I learned is if you can inspire to work together, you can inspire that there is value for both sides, and it it would be, I think, a kind of value that both create for themselves and for for a, a customer and. Um, this is this inspiring this this positive approach is something that is uh, very important and to hear always be open to listen and to see what the ideas of the others are and and then continuously um compare this to what you have on on your mind and see what is what would be the best way not the one you you came up with but maybe the combination of the ideas the others have and 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 my own so this being open um and and encourage people um that things are possible if that we just can think about um let's do it and let's try it um and and don't have don't make a problem out out of things that go wrong i mean if there's a problem we learn and we try to avoid it a second time but we learned and we we are even more competent for the next attempt. So this is something I'm I'm really curious um, about. And and I don't I personally hate command and control. And I'm I personally also look in uh, in um, um, Kubernetes um, in order to find out what what is really behind um, the, the the this collaboration in this complex world. How can you lead in, in, in chaotic and complex environments? It's very interesting to read about this and to consider um, uh, yeah, this for your own leadership, for your own behavior, for your own thinking. That's, that's really great. And I can certainly say from, from our work to, together, you're one to walk the talk here. That, that's usually the thing, and that's a pleasure working up against. Before going into the topic today and talking a bit more about IBM and Cloud One, one final question on, on this. Uh, do, do, do you have any uh, tip or uh, tool you, you would want to share to, to provoke the, the, the thinking you're advocating for here? Um, I, I try to be curious and, and I, I try to look into things. I start reading a book or an article and then I find all these links and sometimes it really derails me from the original topic because those things are make me curious and and I want to look behind the scene and and then you 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 get more ideas um, this is the openness you have and and you can then consider even those things and you are not um, too too narrow in your view you open it um, and and of course you cannot do this for everything I don't want to start coding anymore but I don't I want to to understand what what are the relations between people what is the the social sociology um, of how we how of how we interact in as a society, and and what is the right the right way to to bring value or to um, uh, inspire others. That is that is what I like most. Thank you so much for sharing, Hajo. This this is amazing stuff, and I hope it's it's useful full to you viewing and, and listening out there. Let, let's uh, dive a little into sort of where where the, the circles of, of IBM and Onomondo overlap. Now, the, the timing here is is uh, is, is vital for, for, for this uh, exact episode. Last week, we, we had a, a product launch together on, on uh, the IBM sim. So briefly explain to those who, who might not have, have caught that news, uh, that piece of news is that it's basically a SIM card that you can plug into any device. And as soon as you power on, 
data will start transferring automatically into the IBM cloud, automatic provisioning, all of these things. So basically a full plug and play uh, solution, uh, really trying to tackle these 75% fail rates head on by removing so many obstacles. That That's the brief explanation, but Hadjo, what is an, an IBM SIM in, in, in your view and in the eyes of, of IBM? I, I think it's simply smart. Um, it's simply smart because it it um, it delivers one thing that is um, very important in this complexity in the, in, in which we live. Right? Um, it it makes it easy to consume really complex things. And if you if you have a device and you can attach a SIM card to it that contains all the things that you otherwise would need to specify and to to add parameters to those things, yeah, it's it's pre-configured. It really does what it should do. It grabs the data, it, it uh, trans transmits them to the right place in a secure way, directly, right? Um, from any place on, on the world, almost any place um, uh, on, this, on this globe. This is the fantastic thing, right? So you, you don't need to, to, to uh, manage those things. It, it's, it's just, it works and it, it simplifies the things and it makes it easy to consume. And this is what IT is, 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 has, has um, developed all the time and, and it will further develop. Then IT can, be, uh, can reach more people um, um, as it has done already with the smartphone and the ads already, right? So this is a, a perfect contribution to this, to this um, development. Let's hope maybe that we, we talked design thinking before that, that IT will lend itself further from, from the notion of simplicity that's very dominant in, in design in general. That would be very interesting to, to see indeed. So let's talk a little more into to the, the, the movement around cloud. Now we're deeply in love with, with cloud solutions and, and, and are very excited to see clouds becoming ever more powerful, enabling more and more businesses day in and day out. But, but how do you see uh, cloud developing from 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 your point of view, Hajo. Yeah, I mean, cloud is 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 all around, and uh, and cloud is necessary to to drive innovation. Um, cloud connects a company and enterprise with its external world, right? With customers, with your supply chain, with partners, with with the machines in your manufacturing. Um, there is no way to operate without cloud, um, and. Uh, and what we see is um, that the many public cloud deployments that we see that, um, that companies have um, will continue, of course, but it also has um, raised the complexity in many companies. There are um, many cloud, um, public cloud um, deployments in, in different business units and so on. And there is a need um, for, for many companies to um, to combine these things, to, to combine these um, cloud deployments in a way that you can better manage it and that you have a kind of consistency um, for the data you want to access across the entire um, uh, um, uh, company and for the development you do. You, you do a development for, for a specific um, uh, cloud today or for a specific environment and how would it be if you just develop once and you can deploy it everywhere and you can start with what you have on premise and you can do it on different um, cloud systems, even on your mainframe or on your older systems and, and you can just um, do it once. Just think about the effectiveness that could, um, that could be generated um, from this and the speed up of, of doing innovations, driving innovations, and, and how easy it is to an, for an organization to adapt more quickly to all these changes around. I guess this circles a little around some of the conversations we've had on, on both the hybrid cloud, but also OpenShift you guys are, are working with. Maybe if you can say a few words about that. Yeah, we, we call it um, hybrid cloud um, and say, okay, let's, let's, have, let's standardize, let's standardize and, and bring all these different um, cloud uh, things together, standardize your, your um, application, your, your development and so on, on one, 
platform. And this is what we, where, where we use this open shift uh, from, from Red Hat visits, which is an, which has an openness in order to combine all, all of these things and to make, to make um, um, let's say, a lot of processes and, and the, the way you handle data are more consistent and, and provided throughout the entire company. Um, that is, um, that is what, what we are um, working on. All right. Well, and how, how, is, how are these major changes we are seeing towards the cloud changing the way you guys operate in, in IBM these days? I guess on the back of the dynamics, you also see changing in, in the market and the, the new opportunities you, you, you develop yourself in the tech space. Yeah, I mean, IBM is um, a hundred, uh, the oldest IBM, the, the um, oldest IT company, and uh, it, it uh, exists since 110 years, and it has continuously changed. And I have, um, uh, I have uh, you know, more than three decades um, um, uh, recognized all this. I, I, I have, um, um, I, I've contributed to these changes myself, and uh, and now we have an another major change, major shift that has already started um, 15 years ago when IBM started to become an, a global integrated enterprise where we try to, to um, consolidate things, to do the things consistently by building service, um, service hubs um, that, that provided services for different countries, um, the same thing. And, uh, and then we, we started to, to use Cloud computing as well, and and we have seen how how these things um, need need to go together. We have um, our new strategy that we are working on, and and that we are um, for which we deliver products, services, competencies, skills to the market is um, a, a strategy on built on on hybrid cloud, AI, in a secure in a secure way for different industries. So this is this is basically our strategy, and um, and we have um, we have three things we have um, we have built these services we have um, um, uh, developed um, the products and the software um, we have widened our portfolio for this we have optimized our portfolio for cloud um, we have acquired Red Hat um, with with Red Hat Enterprise Linux with Red Hat OpenShift of course. Um, that went into this um, into this cloud platform, and and the, the the other two things that are important is a partner ecosystem, that that um, extends expands our portfolio with additional innovation for different industries and so on. And we have, of course, um, the the third initiative, which is very important, going back to people, is to to um, to change the way we work, to change the way we lead. We have good values, we can stick to these values, but we have to, to change the way we collaborate, we experience, we, we, um, we become more agile. Um, we work across the entire, the entire company, not in business units, in silos, but horizontally across the entire company. And, and here we, 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 we encourage people to, uh, to, de to uh, develop an entrepreneurial um, uh, mindset, a growth mindset. That means I'm ready for lifelong learning. I'm, I got curious, I look into those things. I build my talent and, and keep my talents and, and build it further. So that's currently going on and, and we have, um, I think shifted and we are in the middle of a shift of a, of a more service oriented company into a more uh, techno technology company with, with Red Hat OpenShift or with our, our open container platform as a central thing together with AI, of course, and, and the, the security. So the shift from service into technology is interesting. And then also working to to keep this growth growth mentality. Uh, by the way, I have a lot of flashing in the background. It's not the police picking me up. We have a photo shoot going on in, in the other room here. My apologies for that. But very interesting working also. That was a very well-rounded answer. Uh, I, I have a million of questions popping up here, but I think it, mm -hmm. it, it, 
very interesting is the the shift from service to technology, but also looking out for this growth growth mindset that that can get lost in the equation of of becoming a company at the size of your your company. Uh, also with the with the heritage, as you says, it, it's the longest longest standing in in IoT, and usually you would you would probably um, think of growth mindset more towards a, a, a startup like the one I'm, I'm representing here in this equation. So I'm happy to hear that you guys are pushing for that uh, agenda internally as well. And certainly I feel it's a mindset we share. Um, Hadjou, I'm curious for yourself, you've, you've, as you said also, you've been in this space for, for quite a while and you've actually pushed for a lot of these changes we're seeing today. Personally, what are you most interesting to, interested to see actually uh, developing on the back of, of some of the things you, you've been pushing? What, what, what's, what's more interesting in what we're seeing where the world is going today? I think the world is going into, I mean, we are in, I mean, I, I reflect our world as, as being networked, as, as being using uh, consuming technology from a large room of possibilities where we pick those things that that help us to to be innovative and the third thing is data and ai and analytics and uh, i and and what i see is um in this world we also need to work networked um with technology and and we need to keep a focus on data because here we get the insights more insights to get to develop vaccines quicker than than before, right? All of these things um, are, are made by data and by the insights we can we can get from data. And maybe we could be we, we could have done better in this pandemic times if we could use more data or if we had analyzed more data where infections really take place and so on. So it's a it's just one one example of how important it is, right? So. What I see is we, we as teams and as individuals being partly already entrepreneurs work more networked. We, 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 we build a lot of innovative teams of, of new ideas just by being networked and, and using this new technology in a way that is further developed to enable more easy consumption, right? And, and faster time to value of new innovations. Network, that, that's a good, uh, good keyword to take away in, in the space between uh, the human capabilities and tech capabilities. It, it reminds me of uh, the McKinsey podcast, they, an episode they had last week, a big recommendation to, to everybody out there. They cover a wide range of, of interesting topics. Uh, a takeaway from that was how the two most, um, uh, it was from their chief learning officer, by the way, uh, but the two most interesting skills to nurture going ahead would be uh, would be uh, emotional intelligence and, mm. and, and tech capability, those two combined. So understanding on tech capability where the world is moving and then applying a deep emotional intelligence as humans because that's, that's the only thing AI, data, the aspects you just brought up, Hatjo, cannot really cover uh, ev even in the long run. I, I always like the five values of being agile, right? Which is trust and, and, uh, and encouragement, uh, is is uh, is openness and empathy, right? Um, those things drive value. Those things drive innovation. Those things drive collaboration. That's great. Let's zoom a little bit in on on, on IoT. We've been circling around cloud. We've yeah. we've talked a little about the cloud sim. We've talked a lot about the human aspects, the networking, the, the indirect leadership, many interesting mm -hmm. aspects. Let's zoom a little bit in on, on IoT. How is IoT moving as, as a space and what are the major opportunities from, from uh, the IBM point of view? Mm -hmm. we, you know, we were very early with IoT in, in 2015, 16. It was... Uh, uh, it was really a, um, the reason why we founded the Watson IoT Center and so on. So um, we are a long time in IoT already. And, uh, and now we see that it's, IoT is now broadly uh, deployed and, and, and more and more companies use it. Um, they started with some predictions and with some insights of their 
of their manufacturing um, lines and so on. But now we see that um, it really, it follows this, what I always use, measure, predict, innovate. So with, with IoT, we do measure, we can predict, and we can, from these in, insights, we can draw ideas what we can do to improve, to innovate things, right? Um, and, and IoT is the key thing here. With IoT, I get the data from the physical world. I get, the, I get those, those oil, as, as, as it was explained so often, with which I can create new value. And, and this is uh, the digital twins. Um, I, can, I can secure things. I can make things safe, it's more safer. And, and I, can, I can, what you, you mentioned McKinsey, and there was one thing I'd like from McKinsey, the, the title, the new lean. This is how they described IoT because now lean could be even more precise because you have more and more insights about um, this data and the analytic capabilities to really see what's going on, right? And you could really see where you need to, 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 to act in order to become more lean, to be, become more, more, more agile and to cut even more waste. That, that's great. And by the way, another learning tip, I, I was fortunate to, to uh, uh, jump into the, the pop-up uh, IBM Watson Center at South mm -hmm. by Southwest a couple of years back. And, and, and that was a three, four hour setback before I was back out on the streets exploring other things. That was highly interesting how you apply AI and, and, and your technologies in there to, to real life examples. So that's one to look out for out there when, whenever you, you get the chance, either via the, your, your experience centers or, or the pop-up experiences. Um, coming back to IoT, what are the biggest opportunities and threats as you see it for, for IoT as, as we move ahead now? Mm -hmm. I, you know, we have, we have a, a, all, all of us on the globe have a, a common problem, which is our climate change. And, uh, and Joe Biden now said it's um, climate change can only be fought against with technology and innovation. And IoT is the, is the key technology for that because IoT tells us what's going on. And with IoT, we can draw these insights and we can make the right decisions what to do. Um, who knows how CO, uh, carbon, carbon, um, carbon, can be, carbon gas can be stored in, in, uh, back in, the, in, in, in someplace in uh, underground, right? Um, we need to have sensors to see how it how it works, what what it uh, what it is doing, and and with only with IoT we can um, we can fight against uh, climate change. And the other thing I'd like very very much, um, uh, you know, in especially in Germany we have a, an energy transition. We have closed down um, the the um, uh, nuclear power station, almost uh, all of them. We we have an, a contract closing the the uh, coal um, power stations um, and, uh, and now what to do and how can you, how can you manage um, and, and deliver all the energy that is needed by the industry and by the people. And this is through IoT. So you can, you can then really predict better what, what, uh, what energy needs to be, to be there is, is to be consumed. What is delivered uh, through the renewable um, uh, assets, right, to the renewable uh, engines, and what what additional energy needs to be um, produced, and without IoT, it that would be no way you could you could um, really orchestrate all of the things for at a country or for countries in a country, and with IoT you can do this. You can cut the waste, and you can make sure that you don't do not uh, produce energy that is not not needed. And uh, and you create um, carbon gas that would be that would be unnecessary. So this is an, a typical um, uh, thing. You have the the uh, um, um, connected vehicles, so we can make um, traffic more more safe. We can um, we can also cut waste here because uh, cars could could drive themselves much more efficient than. Um, than if we humans drive them, right? And uh, and those things um, is only possible with with IoT. We make the world safer. We uh, monitor um, 
a lot of assets. We monitor uh, planes, trains, and so on. And we could know early enough when, when there is something that needs attention um, in, in order to, to be corrected or that asset. Absolutely, yeah. Hadjo. And, and thank you for putting sustainability on the agenda. Also here and in, in zooming in on IT, it's something we're greatly uh, interested and, and excited about seeing um, especially startups popping up and being very serious in this space mm -hmm. and, and finding a lot of uh, enablement via both the, the, the solutions that we are able to offer, but also uh, you and a lot of all uh, other players in this space. So, so, so I know there's a lot of interesting stuff both mm -hmm. coming right now, but also right around the corner. And, and Let's cross our fingers that, that we can make the impact we absolutely meet, need to make together here. Um, let me ask you one, one final question here, Hatju. Um, what would you say, what, what's good to know in between cloud IT and, and the stuff in between? What's to know for maybe both the newbies, like I was just touching upon, but also some of the experts out there? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for, for newbies, I would, I would uh, recommend um, uh, by, by all what they do, I mean, you don't realize that you work with cloud, right? You have apps and, and you, you use them. Um, I, I would always um, recommend to look after security and data privacy. Um, we, are, we know um, from the IBM X-Force team, which is our security um, uh, team that uh, monitors uh, international um, IP uh, in, internet protocol uh, traffic and, and that secures companies and customers and so on. We know that there's a lot of equipment in the um, home automation and so on, not really so secure. So if you invest in those things, make sure um, you, you don't buy an open, an, an open system, open for hackers from outside or so on. Um, and, and always, I mean, Bear in mind if you if you use apps that cost nothing, um, just think about um, the data um, that you provide. Um, if you're not paying, you're paying with yourself, right? Right, you pay yeah. with yourself, and and if you really want this, and and you know for the for the expert, as I said in in uh, in the beginning, um, they should when they work with cloud always consider the bigger picture. I mean, it is it is one thing to work on your cloud project, but the other thing is. What what is what would be the good um, the, the 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 good way uh, the good practice for the entire company how how I can make sure that what I do do for more things for for my development is is um, is also good for the entire company can they can they use what I what I produce can this be shared um, uh, easily and 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 that could um, reduce complexity and and provide more efficiency and effectiveness thank you so much Hadjo. and and on that note let's let's try and wrap it up today uh, and i'll said we can meet in the physical world for a coffee and i know a highly inspiring chat i'm happy at least we, we can uh, have a discussion like this uh, very interesting as always and i hope it will be of value to you out there the the classic question here will be Hadjo, if anybody is interested in in getting in in touch with you what would be the best, best way of doing so yeah they can find me on linkedin um and uh, and and then I, I I can respond. Please send a message with it so I can see why why people want to connect or yeah. And uh, I'm looking forward. I, I thank you very much for this interview and and for this session. I look forward um, to continue our great work, our our um, uh, co-creation and co-innovation. It's it's really fun to work with you and. Uh, and I enjoyed very much and, and we can create even more. Thank you so much. And, and, uh, and I can only say likewise, we'll put the uh, Hans Joachim Koppen is the full name. Uh, we'll put Hatjo's, uh, uh, the link to his uh, LinkedIn in, in the notes to, um, to this episode. Thank you so much uh, for thank tuning in. And Hatjo, thank you so much for participating. Thank you, Anders. Very, very well done. Thank you.